Hi, everybody, and um, welcome to the first session that we're doing today, which is looking at planning. So we have two sessions um, that we're going to be doing. I'm Sarah Clark, and this is Amanda, so I'll get sharing our screen. And here we go. How do we check that this was working earlier on? Making sure, hopefully, that everything's going to go to today. Rushed Almost in from school today. Yep, hope you've and all had a good, good day. There we go. So do you want to start us off, Amanda? Yep, I can't see anything yet on the screen. I am sharing. Try that again. All I can see is you and me. It did work about three minutes ago. Here it is. There we go. It is working now. We're good to it go. Is working. So hi and welcome everybody. As Sarah says, this is our first planning session in our Five Steps Digital. We've got lots of things to share with you, lots of examples from primary and secondary. And um, we're going to be talking about Teams and OneNote, OneDrive, To Do and Planner over the course of both of these sessions. So if you've got any questions, please pop them in uh, the chat and we can answer them as we go. And uh, I think we can get started. So this is Sarah and I. Um, some of you might know us already. So um, we're both MIE fellows and experts and master trainers. We've both sat exams um, in the Microsoft tools and applications. And that's what we do for fun. And that's our Twitter handles. So um, let's get started. So this is just a little outline of what we're looking to cover over the two sessions. Um, we're planning on running for about 35, 40 minutes and giving about five minutes at the end for some questions from you guys if you have anything. Today, what we're going to be looking at is how myself and Amanda are using Teams and OneNote when it comes to planning, whether that is planning within your department, whether that is planning for lessons. Um, we'll be looking at teachers planning. And then tomorrow, we're back on at half past seven, and we're going to be looking at, again, planning, but collaborating in things like OneDrive, how to keep yourself organised with to-do lists, and how the planner app is working. So we split this over two sessions. You, If you're joining us today live, or even if you're on catch-up, the both sessions will be available for people to do at any time. If you are watching this one on demand afterwards, you can join us live for tomorrow or catch back up. So they, they will run independent, but they are linked together all around planning within the classroom and within education. For those of you that are using the Microsoft Educator Center to track your training, we have a code there at the bottom and that will flash up a couple of times throughout the session today and you can redeem that and then all your um, CPD will be tracked there and you can load that up to the GTCS website at the end of the year. So we will get started first of all. I was just going to say, Sarah, if somebody is watching on Catch Up and you do have any questions, you can contact us on Twitter and ask questions there. So we're always around yeah. to answer questions. Myself or Amanda, or you can at Tablet Academy SC, and um, that's Tablet Academy Scotland, during the session as well on Twitter and any of the sessions, the questions will come through to us and we'll answer what we can. So getting started, first of all, in terms of Teams, I use Teams all the time within our school. We are a Microsoft school, um, so we're using Teams a lot anyway. And this is not necessarily how to use Teams, but why you would use it. And we're hoping to give you examples of the way that we are using it and the benefits that we are finding for it. So this is actually an example of my department team. I'm a science teacher at Queen Anne High School over in Dunfermline. And we have a department team and we'll take you through some of the teams that we've got. And what we want to just show you, whether this is in a high school or a primary school, you could be talking about the department. It could be a level. It could be a stage that you're working at and laying it out with lots of channels. And what you'll hopefully be able to see here is that we have got um, channels set up there for all the different levels of courses that we're teaching whether it's advanced higher, any events that are up and coming. We've also got one for CPD, our assessment records, and everything is kept within our biology team. So it's the one place that we go. We try to reduce emails. So the posts that go up with our team members um, are to help us kind of manage. Everything goes up there so that you're not going back and looking for dates within emails. We try and keep everything all in the team so we know where we're going. 
We also have um, our master documents, which are sitting in files. We have our meetings in there at the moment because we are a large department and an even larger faculty. We are not meeting as often face-to-face -face with our whole department. So we're having a lot of our meetings now um, in Teams. They happen within this channel. I think you can even see that there's a wee meeting in there. Our assessment records are all there. Um, bearing in mind, if you are using Glow, for example, just be aware of the information that's kept in there. But our, our assessment records are in there. There's nothing that is sensitive material there, but it's more so that anybody within our department can access anybody else's assessment records and look at the attainment of pupils, which is particularly helpful for our head of department so that he can get a really good overview of how everybody's getting on and all the students. Um, and anything that's really important, we add it as a tab up the top here um, with it. So this is just letting you see it in more detail. Um, and as I said, thinking about when you're setting up your team for your level or your department or anything like that, think about what you want your channels to be. And that will really help you to be organized. Um, within there and it'll help to guide people where it is that they are going in the team um, when it comes to planning whether that's short term or long term planning. This one you can see is our files and <clears throat> you can see they're all this is where our masters are. We used to have all our files sitting on the server. Our servers are aging. They get full very, very quickly. And eventually they are going to go. So everything is sitting in the cloud within the team. Um, if there is something, for, so for example, today, we noticed an error in one of our marking schemes. And it meant that any one of us could go on there. They could easily change that document. The master document is changed. Um, and we can all access it anywhere. If it's on our server, it's much harder to access outside of school. So for me, I'm finding it much easier when I'm planning. The majority of my planning is getting done at the moment after school. <clears throat> so I need to be able to access these documents when I'm at home um, and having them sitting in the team is just making it much, much easier when we're trying to collaborate together. This is our science faculty team. This is a much bigger team. We have about seven members of staff in our biology department. And our science faculty has about 22 members of staff um, in it. So we have our BGE first and second year science. So you can see that's our two different levels. So all the files relating to those courses are in there. But what we've also put in recently is a channel for class cover. Something that is um, the way things are at the moment with the, the pandemic, staff are in and out often at the moment and being a large department, there's always going to be somebody off. And we were sending in emails to our head of department. We were looking for class cover. People were trying to access it. So by making the channel within our science faculty team, no matter whose class it is that we are having to cover, we can go in there. This was actually my class from last week. I was off for a couple of days last week. And I was easily able to put some information in there about um, what my class was going to be doing. So somebody, if I put that in the class team, then that person isn't a member of my team. So they wouldn't be able to access it the way the kids are accessing it. So this post was put into the class cover. It gave them a link to a couple of documents that the kids were going to be using that needed printed off. And then there was a link to a video for the students to watch. This was also put in the team for the students. But for the member of staff that was covering my class, it made it much easier. So I was doing my planning and then the member of staff that was covering my class could plan what they were going to do as well by getting everything within that one space. So we're finding that is making a, a big difference to us, something that we've only recently started to put in um, within our faculty. So in terms of um, our whole school, we have a whole school team as well. As I said, we have got about 130 members of staff within our whole school team, and it can get quite busy in there. You'll see over on the left-hand side, again, thinking about our channels and what we're wanting to get out of the team. One of the main things was to try and reduce emails, keep things much easier organised. We are offering support, particularly tech support. Lots of people will be saying, um, I've noticed that this isn't working this morning or I can't get access to this. Is anybody else having the same issues? And straight away, if it's not 
our, our tech support or myself or our digital working group, another member of staff is able to post in there and say, yeah, I've got the same problem. And that means that we can then investigate that or we can put up, yep, yeah, everybody's got the, the same problem across the school, across the local authority and tell them when it's going to be fixed. So we're finding it's useful for communicating with whole staff rather than sending out emails all the time. Um, and we also, again, because we're a large staff, we can't have whole school meetings at the moment. So our whole school staff meetings, whether that's CPD events, um, we meet every, every Tuesday, they are taking place within our team as well. And again, everybody knows to go into the team, that's where the meeting is. We're not then looking for links and emails. So when you are setting up a whole school team or a department or a faculty or a level or a stage, I would really say my, my tip here would be think about what your channels are going to be to make it as easy as possible for people to find the information um, within that team. Amanda, is there anything that you want to add about use of, of teams across the school or across because you're within primary school? So you, yeah, you have to review. I would say my top tip really is um, not to worry about um, having all your team's channels set up to begin with. And certainly in my experience, you know, we've started off with maybe one or two channels and then things have evolved as we've thought, OK, we need a, a channel for this working party or for this subject or this topic. So. Um, yeah, I would say just pick and choose your channels very carefully and then you can add to them as and when you need them. <clears throat> yeah, we've done the same, particularly with the whole school, our whole school team. We've um, deleted channels off that weren't needed anymore. We've added new channels. We found we had one channel and it was um, full of lots of different things. So kind of then split that up into three other channels so that staff were able to find things a little bit easier. Um, and it does, it, it is making a difference. We have staff that are on there regularly. Um, and I think particularly in a school that is as big as what we have, trying to meet people can be very, very hard. So staff are able to say, you know, I'm in this working group, there's a competition running or we're doing sustainability. It's um, COP26 week. Here's some resources, actually, that, which is um, one of the posts that was there for staff to then take forward that they maybe wouldn't know about if it wasn't being posted in the whole school team. So mm -hmm. this is teams. If you have any questions at all about how we're, we're setting them up, then please get on the Twitter chat or stick it in the, the YouTube chat and we will be looking to answer these at the end as well. I mean, today I even had an opportunity to use the um, search function in Teams and it was phenomenal. And I, I couldn't remember. I'm in lots and lots of different teams. So I couldn't remember which team I had seen a comment about this subject. And I li literally just clicked on the search function, put in what I thought it was about or what it would include. And within seconds, I had exactly what I was looking for. So, you know, even if you are in lots of teams or in your smaller school and or a larger school, you know, organizing your teams you still have that option to go and search for what you need so it's brilliant and I did that today thank goodness it worked <laughs> and if you want to be really organized and we haven't done this yet in our team <laughs> um you can go in and you can tag people so looking at all the members that are in there if you go into this the, the um the team settings and go into managing your team you can access all the members and you can add a tag then for each department or stage um or your group that people are teaching, and then you can at mention specific groups of people rather than the whole team. It's something that um, it's time consuming to set up at the start. And as people are, are leaving and coming, you need to kind of keep on top of that. So it does need somebody to manage it. But I think looking forward, um, our whole school team next year, I think that's possibly the way that we are going to go because at the moment we at mention the, the whole team. So when you're creating a post, if you just at and type in the word, Put in the at symbol and type in team you can then everybody will get a notification um that there is something in there that you want them to see so moving on from teams it always goes hand in hand with yeah. well no um one of my, I, mean, my I just wanted to say if anybody has any top tips about how they use teams within their school community um please uh, put it on twitter or tag us that would be great to uh, learn what everybody's mm -hmm. doing and how everybody's using teams yep so Teams goes hand in hand with OneNote, and I am a big, big, big fan of OneNote. 
And probably about three years ago, I moved to a digital planner within OneNote. So within we use a uh, Glow in our school. Um, but if you're not within Glow and you've got Office 365, if you go into the OneNote um, tile, you'll be able to create your own OneNote. So that's different from a class notebook, which we're, we're going to mention. But I moved on to a digital notebook planner. Um, I still have my paper one. I do still have my paper one here for all the scribbles that I do day by day. But um, I keep everything in my planner. And for me as a teacher, in terms of being organised, then I have different sections. Um, we can see, I'm, I'm going to zoom in as well, but you can see down the side there, I have sections for, I had parents night last night, so my notes for parents night are in there. Um, I have a section that is password protected for passwords. Any CPD that I'm doing gets jotted down there. The whole school information has policy documents. It has the fire evacuation procedure. And I can access it on my desktop in school. I can access it on my phone. I can access it if I'm moving around the school um, with my mobile device. So if I'm going to another department to help them, I can still access all this information. So for me, it's my one-stop shop. Um, all my meeting notes are in there as well. So this picture here is just really to show you how I've set up my, my planner. And as I said, I have one that has passwords that is password protected. Um, and it's things like, you know, my Kahoot, my quizzes, um, all those logins for all those sites, my word wall, all these things that I'm going, I can't, I can't remember what email I used or what my password is for that one. I keep them all in there so that I can access them um, at any point. I also have my day-to-day -day lesson plans in there as well. So down here, I have actually um, set up a section. So it's actually a section group. So down here at the bottom where it says add a section, if you right click on that, it will, you can add a section group. And it's a little drop down like this. And then I've got a section for each month. And then within each month, there is a page for each day. And all I did for my planner, when I thought about what my paper planner looked like, um, I made a table. For me, tables within OneNote keep things really organised. So I made a table and then I set that as a template page. So every time I add a new page to that section for January or February, it gives me this outline. And when I'm planning for my lessons, it's not a lot of information I'm putting in here, um, but it's just it's my overview, it's my thoughts. You'll see I have typed information in there, I have scribbled information. So I've been on my desktop computer when I'm typing, I've been on my Surface or my iPad when I've been scribbling things in. But I can put everything in there, not only my notes on what I'm going to be doing, but I've actually got links to videos that I'm going to be showing as well. Um, I've got little images that I might be showing in there. And it's really just my thinking and getting myself organised. I then go into the class notebook and have a bigger plan set up for it. But my day-to-day -day planner is set up there and I can go and I can check at any point what it is that I am doing. We've had a great question, Sarah, actually from Anastasia. Um, hi, is all of this achievable offline as well as online? Yes, so the with my OneNote, I use OneNote within the app. So you'll see here um, when it's within the app. And there is a little um, bit at the top where you can see it's got a cloud and a tick. That means I'm online when I'm using it. But sometimes my internet may drop off, particularly that happens a lot in the school. And I can still work on OneNote offline. And as soon as I then become online again, it will sync up to the cloud and it will be accessible on any device. So you can work on OneNote offline. Um, Teams, no, because it's not going to be giving you all those features. You can get onto it, but you can't then really do anything. Um, but with OneNote, you can still do all your planning in there. And then when you go back online um, and the Wi-Fi is working again, it will sync up and you can access it on any device. So that's my planner. Um, oh, let me go back. As a high school teacher, Amanda, I know you've got um, you've got a lovely planner with you know <laughs> pictures in it and colours and all these bit emojis that I one yeah. day want to be able to do, but never quite get round yeah. to. 
So I have I have a personal planner as well, which is just a one note that's not connected to any teams or anything like that. And it literally has all my CLPL. It has things that I just to remember. I've got I've got like a personal personal one to try and get my own life outside of work and school organized. But this is actually my one note class notebook teacher planner. And um, so throughout lockdown, I was teaching primary one. Um, so I wasn't necessarily using OneNote with my pupils, but I was using, I set up a Teams for my class and I created my teacher planner in the OneNote class notebook, which was attached to that team. So I added my senior leadership team, my teacher who was covering my non-class contact time, um, any sort of supply teachers that were covering my class, they were all added to that team, which gave them automatically um, complete access to my planner as well. And I set this up after the first lockdown because I had at home my A3 lever arch folder, which I have a terrible habit of dropping because I'm always carrying things, other things with me. Um, and so I just decided I would take exactly what my school policy was for a teacher planner in that A3 plan, that A3 lever arch folder, and I recreated it in uh, OneNote. And um, so this is a, just a kind of zoomed in version. So I've got my primary 1B welcome page, the collaboration space content library, which if I was using it with pupils, I would use but the teacher admin area, which is the area that only owners of a team can see is where I created my teacher planner. And my teacher planner split down into two bits, class information and teacher information. And if Sarah clicks the next little picture it should come up. And this is all the information that I have about my class. So any sort of um, information I need to know um, about support for learning, um, our house list, um, letters that were sent out by um, text message or email to parents, I would get a copy of that. So I know I knew exactly what was sent out home. And also if they had a letter that was handed to pupils that got lost, I would have a copy that I could easily get to them as well. Medical information that was important, allergies and things like that. Um, any newsletters that I was sharing for the class, a photo album of what I was doing in class and IT information, which could have been anything about uh, what websites we're using, um, other bits and pieces like that. So that was all the information about class information that anybody could access that was an owner of my team. So the teacher information, the other information, which is the teacher information is on the next one. There we go. I've got calendars, important information. And then again, I've used those subsections, assessments, plans and pupil notes. And that literally is my entire plan resources, information that anyone would, would need to know about my class and teaching my class. So I've got a few more screenshots to show you exactly what's in each of these sessions, sections. So in assessments, these are the kinds of things that I would do for primary one. Um, observations, the pupil progress, I've got that password protected because those are my notes about observations and um, if I'm writing a um, a school report that I possibly wouldn't want absolutely everybody to see if they were just a, su a supply teacher in my class or they were in just one day a week, they might not need that information in particular. So I have certain parts of my planner uh, are locked down and um, targets and different bits and pieces. So everything and anything I need about my assessments. Plans is massive. So everything that I have, the framework for my school, I've got the curriculum year map, um, isolation plans, timetables, everything and anything. And then I've got a subsection within a subsection for every curricular area. And I've also shown you what those look like in a little bit more detail. Um, so in numeracy, I've got groups. If I've got groups, my planners, number talks, anything to do with big baths, resources for thing line, conceal, and everything I need for literacy. And that literally is everything and anything I need to teach those curricular areas with my class. Everything in one place, everything easy to reach, everything easy to use, it, lots of things are embedded in this as well. So nobody has to go elsewhere for any of those resources. I embed videos and images and URLs and forms and sways and everything. Um, plans look like this. Um, so I've got 
uh, different sections in my weekly plans. So I've got term one, term two, term three. So I stopped, this was my last year's planner, I stopped um, because I came out in secondment and another teacher took over. So within my term three, I've got my weekly information. So because I'm in primary one, I've got a timetable, but I've got more importantly, things like a play plan, provocations, uh, the weekly bulletin that was sent out by the senior leadership team, any observations. So everything, as you can see, is in there. Lots and lots of information that's easily accessible. And I just kept that up to date so that if I was absent and somebody else had to cover my class, it's all there and they could easily get access to it. So that's my teacher planner. Um, that was just an absolute godsend for me. I didn't have to go and look for documents on the shared server or is that the, the most up-to-date version of this document? I just knew I, at the beginning of the year, I got everything that I needed and put it in my teacher planner and I can't recommend doing it enough. It saved me so much time. I didn't have to print out hundreds of bits of paper and then put it in my lever arch and then end up dropping my lever arch and thinking I've lost a page. Um, so that is my teacher planner. And I think I've got another example of another primary school planner as well. No, uh, no did I not? Oh, okay. And I think the next slide is yours, Sarah. And I think, you know, with, with it as well, how you set it up, mine has evolved over the years. I sit down and I go, I, I don't think I need that section, but I'm going to put this one in. And it does evolve from year to year. And throughout the year, other things get added to it as well. Um, what I like about it is if I do get a paper document, so that image that I showed that I had our calendar of events, our whole school calendar of events for the full year, that comes out to us in a little laminated, um, folded piece of card. But I can easily take a picture of it and then just insert it. So anything that does come out that's, that's paper-based um, to me, I can easily just take a picture and put it in there because for me, I will lose those bits of paper somewhere on my desk. I'm not yes. particularly organised on my desk. And I share a room as well. So there's other people in and out of my room and that's when things go missing. So I take the pictures and then they go in there as well. So it's just photos of it. Yeah, and in primary one, I would often have um, an iPad in class. And if I'm doing observations and I don't have enough time to write something down, I would just take a quick photograph and then do an audio recording and upload it straight into my OneNote and I can deal with it later. So I can put the picture of the children, whatever they're doing, and then do a little recording of you know, what's happening. And then I can type up notes later. And that might be crucial information about progress or attainment or where we're going next in the class for what we're learning, provocations, things like that. So it's just easy to do and keep things quickly in one place. Yep. So myself being high school, obviously I'm seeing lots of different classes. So I have my teacher planner that gives me kind of an overview. And then like what Amanda's got there with lots more detail, that's actually within my class notebook that's linked to a particular team for the classes that I have. So this is me planning in much more detail. Um, I actually am then able to copy the content library. So all the documents that these pupils access year after year, um, I'm able to copy that over. I also have a teacher only section. So this is my teacher only section um, over at the side. So it's got the tasks, it's got SQA documents in there. It's got master pages that I'm going to be using. Um, all the PowerPoints that I'm going to need. Biology, it's full of diagrams. So all my PowerPoints um, are inserted in there. So I'm not having to go and find them. I take them from that team. That's our, our master team. And I put them into my OneNote so it's there. And we also I have my board notes in there as well. So I use the OneNote as my whiteboard and I can actually then populate my whiteboard before I come to class and plan all those images that I'm going to need. So this is an example of um, one of my board notes that I can sit and do before I come into the lesson. And again, that video that I'm going to be showing is there. I've actually taken um, not a whole PowerPoint because I don't need the whole PowerPoint for this lesson. I only needed kind of three slides for this lesson. So I took a copy of the three slides from the PowerPoint. Then um, during the class, I can then highlight things and I'm able to add my own notes there. Um, I have a Promethean board that I can write on. I also have a, a, um, a Surface, so I'm actually able, I've got a pen that I can write, but you can do that if you've got a smart board, Promethean board, a ProWise board, you can write on the one note as well. Um, and what I did have as well is, if it'll zoom in, oh, that is, um, a picture from the textbook. So 
we don't have enough textbooks for one each they're, if they're gone between two classes. So I took a picture, put it, and just inserted it into my board, and then we can all see it together and we're talking about it rather than everybody having their own um, textbook. And now that I've done that, my uh, it will not zoom back out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Three panic stations there. So, it it. so, you know, photos from the textbook, screen clippings as well. So clippings from the internet. So I, when I'm planning my lesson, I'm taking everything and I'm putting it in before I come to the white, uh, come to the lesson. So my whiteboard is good to go. And then during the lesson, any work that students have got, I can take photos and put that in there as well whether it's on my phone, whether it's on my iPad, my, my Surface that I'm using. Um, and then we can talk about some really good examples. And the students are often working in groups as well. So if they've maybe got a card sort, my students are writing on the desk. I can then take pictures of that and put it in as well. I can also um, I take little videos of them doing experiments and we can put that in. Um, and it helps to jog our memory when we come back to class the next again day. So what we'll be doing, let's have a look. And obviously anybody who's off can get on it at all times. But I can pl I feel like I can plan my whiteboard before I actually come to the lesson. And then that be becomes added um, during the session with that classroom. Yeah, I think one note, also, it gives you a, an opportunity to really kind of keep those observations notes on the hoof and planning in the moment. So important for infants in early years. You know, often I'm out and about and something will occur to me that I've forgotten about and I can on my phone and I would just make a quick note right then and there. I'm not looking to write something down and then remember where I put that bit of paper. I could actually do that planning in the moment on the hoof, keeping my notes all in one place and making sure that I'm not missing anything. And um, we have had a question again, Sarah. Um, Password protected notebook and the added security. How do I set this up? That's a great thing. I love it. It is literally, I usually do it on my MacBooks. It's really usually a, a right click and you can do password protect and you just enter yep. your a password for that section. <clears throat> yep. So here yeah, you can see I've got um, the section here. If I right click the section, I can password protect that. So I just right click it. I'm not doing it just now because this is a live one note that has you know my kids and things in it. Hence why we're, we're doing screenshots for you. But if you right click the section um, and then it will say, you know, add a password, please make sure you take note of that password because if you forget it, you can't do anything to get that back. So yeah. just make sure that you know what that password is. We actually were using it for our assessments this year, our formal assessments for the students who were getting digital assessments. We password protected the page um, so the students couldn't access it before the class. We then gave them the password during the period so that they could get into their assessment. And then what we did, once they were finished, we then went and we changed the password so that they couldn't then get access to it afterwards. So that's how we're kind of doing our formal assessments in school this year for any students that need um, any, uh, if they have any support needs and it's um, a digital um, paper that they're needing. We're doing it within OneNote. So last bit, I'm noting we're about 25 to, so we'll try and rush yeah. through in the next kind of five minutes. Um, the last little bit is about, you know, collaborating in OneNote with others, long-term planning, whether that's a department, whether that's a whole school, and um, being able to put your outcomes in, all our resources. This um, picture that we've got here, this is our biology um, notebook, and we were planning for, uh, I think this was third year. As you'll see again, I like a table because it helps to keep everything organised. We're not jumping on top of each other. So we've got the key area. And what we've done is we've inserted a forum. We've then got a PDF that's been inserted here of some questions. We've then got the marking scheme that's there. We have got an additional mind map, which is a Word document. Um, and then there is a booklet there for all of the key areas. So we, we all had different things. Some of us had done forums. Um, I maybe had three forums and somebody else had another couple of forums. Somebody says, I'll work on the marking schemes. Somebody then says, oh, I'll, I'll upload the mind maps. So we had it in one place and we were able to just organise it. We can put it into files. We can't put a forum, mind you, into files. So we put them into our, our OneNote this way. Um, and this was our whole term plan. And that was at one particular key area. But this was our whole term planning 
for one of our national classes. And I know it's, it's quite hard to see, but I think what you get from that is you can see there is notes in there, there is files in there, there is images, there are web links in there as well to videos, um, there are web links to additional sites that people might be finding beneficial, um, and everybody can add to it, um, and then you can pick and choose what it is that you're wanting to do from that. So again, we do that course by course, and it just gives us access to a, a whole variety of resources that are there. Amanda, the primary one? Yeah, so this is one of our wonderful schools in South Ayrshire that decided they would like to trial using OneNote as a daily weekly planner in across their primary school. So I did one session with them and um, the senior leadership and one of the teachers who is <clears throat> not only a digital technology champion, but also an MIEE um, in Scotland. And they what the senior leadership team set up a kind of template one note and then distributed it out so that every teacher had the bare bones of their daily weekly planner um, according to their school policies and their school framework ready to pick up and go and then they populate it with whatever else that they need they make it their own so this is just a, an example of um, a daily weekly planner it within that school and you can see that they've created a table and they've just added in some videos and some links and some information and uh, and that's how they're doing their planning so this was initially uh, a trial um, but very very quickly even the the teachers who are not entirely confident with their skills in digital have completely fallen in love with this because it saves them time it's easy to do it's easy to share they can gather all their information and all the resources in one place and and it's now set as their um, school policy this is how everybody in the school does their their daily and weekly planning um, in the school forevermore I think and um, so she Karen her name is had sent me some screenshots and um, just to share with you and you can see this is just an example of her weekly planner um, she's also got a password protected section in here and it's about Gerfec and um, sort of private information that she would want to share with the senior leadership team. So um, Karen at this class teacher and the senior leadership team have access to this section, but nobody else would. So if there was another teacher covering the class, they wouldn't have access to that. And that's nice and secure for them. Um, and I think she said, yeah, so whole school policies and planning reviews that again is dif distributed, created and distributed into all of the class teachers one notes by the senior leadership team. So the senior leadership team will create something and then they'll just distribute it into everybody's one note. And it's really quick and easy to do so that no class teacher has to take the time, pick up a photocopy or print anything out. It's just there straight into their one note and it makes everything so much quicker so much more efficient, easy to collaborate and see what everybody's doing. That's a, a PE um, overview planner of what everybody's doing and when. So it just makes it a lot more efficient um, to share that information across the school community. So it's absolutely amazing what they've done. They've just picked it up and ran with it and they literally did this so quickly. And thanks to Karen for sharing them and, and yeah, giving us amazing. some examples here to use. And um, Amanda, can I ask you with this one? So is this a, a staff notebook? That has been created within one note and oh and they've got um all the sections and then each member of staff has their own section within that one note yes so um they have a staff one note and then they have their own one notes for um their own class so this would be karen's weekly planner for her mm -hmm. own particular class so they have the whole staff as you do in secondary and then she has her own her own part for her own class Mm -hmm. she'll have a class notebook for her own class excellent and i think that's us bang on 4 40 uh, this good time in that one um from it but if anybody has any questions we'll have a wee look in the chat and we'll have a wee look on twitter and see if there's anything there as we said um you can contact myself and, and amanda at any point on twitter i think that's our hobbies now um yes. and if you are using the microsoft educator center there is the code along the bottom for you um and i think niles in the background and if the, there should be a little feedback form so we really would benefit for these sessions and for moving forward and how we're planning for these sessions um the whole five steps digital um over this kind of term is looking at planning, we're looking at assessment, we're going to be looking at feedback and um, presenting, we're looking at um, assessment for learn uh, ASN as well. 
and yeah. we've kind of split them up. Some sessions are maybe split two, some of them split over four. Feedback fortnight, for example. But the idea with these is that it's centered around hopefully pedagogy. It's not necessarily showing you how to use the tools, but showing you why we are finding the tools beneficial and giving you some examples of ways that you could then be using them in your classroom or in your school or in your establishment. So um, I will jump back out just now and I will stop sharing my screen. That's a little uh, one for next day. For tomorrow. <laughs> Yes, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll lots of great things to share with you tomorrow. But if anybody has is already using Teams and OneNote with their class or within their school community, please share with us what you are doing. If you've got any questions, as Sarah says, please uh, tag us on Twitter. Happy to help and answer any questions. And um, I think that's it. Please, please, please uh, redeem your code. Get credit for attending this session tonight. You can put it under your GT GTCS profile. So get take the credit, get the credit for it. And if you don't mind filling in that feedback for, form for us, that would be um, absolutely amazing. I'm having a little look just to see if anybody has um, asked anything on Twitter. Any I don't know if we've missed. there's any questions coming through on Twitter. I'm just checking uh, at tablet academy just scrolling through the comments here as well yeah I, I love the password protected section it's it's so handy to have so i can share my planner with everyone but just keep the the things that you have as well sarah you know those um websites that i use hundreds of them and i'm thinking what email what password what have i used to sign up i can just password protect that as well for my own use um yeah. yeah, and hopefully, you know, those people that are have joined us or are watching back, it's given you some ideas. And as I said, if you are watching back, um, feel free to to contact us on Twitter if there's anything that you need clarification yeah. on. But hopefully, you can go away with a few ideas, whether it's Teams, whether it's OneNote, it will always be changing. You will be changing it. You will find better ways to do it. Um, and if you're setting one up for the first time, please let us know that as well. And hopefully we will see you tomorrow at half past seven, um, where we will be looking at OneDrive, To Do and Planner. And Planner is something that I haven't been using. And uh, that's over to that way. That's Amanda's, all Amanda. <laughs> so I'm going to be learning something on that one tomorrow. Um, the link for uh, tomorrow, it will be on Twitter or you can go to the Tablet Academy Scotland website, look at the events and it will be um, streamed on there as well live. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Make Teams and OneNote work for you. Honestly, it will change your life for the better. Have a great night, guys. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye.